Let's call the select board meeting to order for Monday, March 15th at 7 p.m. Review agenda for addition, removal, or adjustments of eight. So we got items. Darla. Darla? Yeah, she's here. I didn't see her in the chat. I didn't see her. She's <laughs> waving her hands. <laughs> oh, there you are, Darla. Next to now time. we don't have any changes or adjustments, do we? Well, just a couple. Um, the agenda did not reflect the addition of the uh, February 22nd minutes, which were carried over from the previous meeting. Okay. Also, we need to modify the executive session to include uh, discussion uh, of legal matters with our town regarding a, a, a prospective grievance personnel matters. Can you repeat that? part i just my thing cut out on you i heard personal or something something matters okay. uh we're adding uh, com uh communications with our attorney regarding legal matters and the prospective grievance do you know what the vsa is on that or will you just add it um, uh, yeah. Uh, 313A1D. And attorney client communications, which is 3A1F. Okay. Anything else? That'll do it. Okay. Okay, Zoom meeting, everybody please mute yourself and if you have a question, you can chat, raise your hand, wave so we can try and pick you out. Annual select board organization of matters. First order of business, elected chair and vice chair. Nominate Peter Huffman as chair. Second. Any more, any more nominations? Okay, discussion? Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Yes! <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> okay, motion carried. Um, pass it off the baton, Peaker. <laughs> All right. Uh, Vice Chair. I elect Ian. I make a motion for Ian. I will second that. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Congratulations, Boy. Ian. Thank you. Ian, you lost your chance to oppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I could do that? You yeah. could. Yeah. That's a move you'd ever vote you. I don't know if it'd be very fruitful. Yeah, I don't think so either. Elected under protest. There you go. No. no. <laughs> that isn't what you said last week. You were you said you were thinking you were gonna, and I said I told you you didn't have a choice. So, <laughs> uh, designate regular meeting schedule subject subject to occasional modification. Make a motion. We continue to meet at seven o'clock. And every other Monday, the second and fourth, Third, second and fourth, fourth. Second, and fourth. Fourth. second and fourth Monday of the week. I'll second that more of the month. Excuse me. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye or raise your hand. <clears throat> Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, designate the Addison County Independent as a newspaper record. So moved. Second. second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand, say aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Designate official posting locations for the town. 
currently the town offices, Lawrence Memorial Library, and Shaw's. I Those have to be physical locations right now. Yes. So, Mac, as, I, just ask the question if I get a second. 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 Okay. Would the library close? Should we have a fourth place? Well, I was, I was just about to say that I received a request from a citizen that we add the Bristol Beverage Center. Mm -hmm. Consult with them to see if they'd be willing to be a location. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't we used to post at Martin's at well, as well? You might know better than the rest of us, Peter. Yeah. yeah. I, I never. Of Middlebury, but we felt like that only got a certain group of people potentially. So that's why we moved it to Shaw's or added Shaw's. I would probably have difficulty getting it there. <laughs> uh, Where's that? Yeah, Martins. Martins? A driveway yeah. not big enough to pull into, Valerie? Well, timing. Sometimes <laughs> oh, the agenda okay. doesn't come together until late in the afternoon. So it would be it would be easier to do Shaw's and Bristol Beverage, is what you're saying. Correct. Does Bristol Beverage have a community bulletin board of some sort? Not that I've noticed. Well, they have they do have one, but it's in with the bottle redemption. Oh right, oh, right, right. Section. I mean, it's not in the store; it's in the bottle redemption. So you're not going to get everybody that goes into the store. I mean, although mm -hmm. they do place stuff on their windows, you know, on the windows that the doors it's and that that go in. That's they have true. minimal on their windows, but they I thought they also had a little pin board on the inside in that little vestibule there. I thought so too, yeah. But maybe it might just be an unofficial one. But we could I'm sure we could talk to Adam and right. ask him about that. Um it would be okay. going through the, the main door would be a better location. Right. But if he doesn't have an official board, it might be difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. What's your plan? Um, well, I'd like to add, I think we I know that these are these are um actual spaces, but I want to add uh, front porch forum and Facebook to this list and make it official that those are places that we have to post. Um, and I think this is a good, even though I know it's, it's with regard to the rules, it's just the physical location, but I, I like to add those two virtual locations just so we always do that and people can Bless expect to, to find them there. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. so, we, we do it anyway, but it's just nice to have it as our official list. Mm -hmm. So are we amending the motion to include Bristol beverage and um, the two front websites. Front Port Forum and Facebook. No, I'll amend that, Peter. Or just change your motion? I'll change my motion, yeah. The only thing, if we if we add Bristol Beverage and we can't do it, is that we just would strike it from our, how do we change that? We'll say pending approval. Okay. Pending approval from Adam. Okay. Just the library. Are you good with, Ian, you seconded that? Are you good with I that did. change? I am. Are you good? Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Motion carried. Or opposed. Motion carried. I guess if everybody votes in the affirmative, I don't have to say the <laughs> other. <laughs> you would hope. <laughs> One would think, but I guess it's a formality. Authorized Treasurer's Office to process weekly payroll. With the select board approving warrants every other week, uh, so every every okay. se every second and fourth Monday, maybe. Do we need to change that? How about after every select board? <laughs> no, you can't do that because sometimes we meet more often. Well, the second, the second and fourth Monday are are, are scheduled. That's right. I mean, we don't we don't we're not meeting every other week mm -hmm. on that schedule. How about we just amend it, Peter, to say every other warrants proved every other week or any pending select board uh, meeting? If every other meeting? Or every other meeting? Or why don't you just say, uh, why don't we just leave that out and say to process weekly payroll with the select board approving warrants? There you go. There you go. That works, Michelle. I'll make a motion. Whose motion was that? Ian. That's mine. And you're happy with that change? Yeah. And who second? I will second it. Okay. So that's seconded with the changes that it didn't yep. get seconded for. All right. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye, raise your hand. 
opposed? Motion carried. Uh, consider adoption of select board rules and procedures. Now, this is where you're going to get me to have to do both, to call both, and even if we everybody votes in the affirmative. <laughs> What's your pleasure? So moved. Second. With, with the changes. Um, okay. Did, did you say, did you move, Joel? Yeah. Okay. Somebody second? You're, I seconded that. And you're okay with those changes, Joel? Because it was there was some draft, a draft one that Val had put together just um, that changed the times and, and the mm -hmm. way that we meet because of Zoom. Uh, yeah, well, I thought we took care of that up in number uh, three. Well, it's it's in the real, rules of procedure that, that okay. those are yeah, in I'm there. Fine so. with those. Sure. Okay. Okay, so while we're – I have a couple questions, um, Val, and you may be able to answer this. On um, G. God, now i got to get – G? So I can see this. Okay. So um, G. Oh, I see. This talks about without being physically present or a designated meeting location, the agenda for the meeting. Somebody needs, uh, we need to designate one, be at least one physical location. Well, we're in Zoom that we kind of don't meet that criteria. So I didn't know if we needed to change that. Mm. Because that was that rule, I think was was at the beginning of or at March of last year, right? right we still right. we still needed a physical location until right. the they changed it at the state level, and we were allowed to meet without a physical location. So that's looks like G is still in there from last year's. It is. Yep, I didn't catch. Which is fine for it to be in there, but the question is: is can we say can we expand on that and say except for in cases when? I, you know, and I don't know. Yeah. There's a. Yeah, because right now, legally, we can't meet in person. Right. Right. So, right. And so do we don't we, have, a, we don't, we don't currently have a physical location. Is what, that's your point, Michelle, right? Right. 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 And do we intend to carry on this way in some shape going forward as well? I think we intend, I, if, if I'm not mistaken, we said even once we go back to meeting in person, we're still going to run the Zoom so that we can get more people involved. That's what I recall as well. Right. I wonder if we just strike everything after that first sentence. Sure. And we could, and then we could amend as, as rules change at the state level. You know, which which will be in probably the next few months as as vaccinations roll out. Then I have one more question. Go for it. Um, on O, we talk about email communications, Val. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if we can amend this because we've done this in the past where we've had we've had to make a decision via email because it was emergent or whatever, and it w couldn't wait until the next meeting, and then we then the select board confirms at the next, you know, physical meeting. Right. What section are we, is there a specific section? Section O, letter O, whatever. Yeah. In the, in the, your first section. Right. Sorry, in section three. Yeah, sorry, section three. So second, sec second part of it. Right. Is there a particular name for, for doing that in an emergency situation using email? We've ratified. Uh, okay. Violations. Do you feel we, we need that Yeah, we ratify it at the next meeting. What have you come up with, Valor? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I suppose you can say um, for the following persons, except in an emergent situation, 
and that decision to be ratified at the next meeting. You want to add that as like a point three? There or something. I mean, I'm not. I just don't want to get it, get us in trouble if we have to make a decision. Right. <clears throat> Can we can we postpone that one until next meeting and sort this out, or is this something we have to have tonight? The the entire policy that well, you haven't had one at all, so there's no urgency. I mean, we can accept the policy with and just say with the mod. Well, we can modify that one section once we get figure out the wording. Sure. I mean, the wording, Michelle, was is more when we were meeting in person and we couldn't meet in person now, I mean, as much as we could, I remember doing once or twice, we've had to do it through email many few years ago. And then we ratified at the end of the meeting at the next duly sworn meeting, but here we could ratify it until the next, we could do a zoom meeting that night, correct. Or within 24 hours. Absolutely. Yeah. But we, we actually made a decision this just not too long ago. I think we made a decision via email on a, an expense or were contract or something or other that had to be done by a certain day. And, mm. and then we just ratified it at the next meeting. Yeah. I mean, usually it's not something that requires too much discussion. It's something we've all usually we've discussed in the past. We just needed a, it was a timing, a timing thing. Mm. Then I recommend we come back to this. There we go. <laughs> So you want to put that, you want to we'll put that on next meeting. Table sure. it. Valerie, why you send that email out for those draft this what we're talking about? Friday. Friday. See, I haven't got an email from you in two weeks. Here. Huh. I don't get yours from home. I don't know why. I just got Ian's here for, when I asked him. Your spam. <laughs> just gonna say the same thing, Darla. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. Mm-hmm. Check your yeah. junk folder. Maybe your computer thinks Valerie's junk. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be the first time. <laughs> All right. So we're going to come back to that one. Yeah. Next week or in two weeks or our next meeting. Uh, review conflict of interest policy. I think it looks fine from what we had the previous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that a motion? That's yeah, a motion. <laughs> I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Yeah, you're in a spam. Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, designate select board liaisons to town departments. Do we need to change any of them? Or is everybody happy where they're at? I'm happy where I am. I'm happy. Happy. I'm Do you have the list, Valerie, so you can just read it? Sure. I don't, I, in front of me. Uh, Fire Department is Ian. Lawrence Library is Ian. Lister is Joel Bouvier. Uh, planning and Zoning is Michelle. Police is Ian. Public Works is Peeker. Recreation is Darla. Revolving Loan Fund is Michelle. Town Office is Darla. And Water and Sewer is Joel. Wait, Peeker, you only get one. Yeah, or, what's up with that? It's Peeker? the biggest department with the most headache. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Valerie, can you repeat that one more time for me? I got most of it. It's in the TA report. Page three. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute when I said that. Okay. Yep. Everybody, uh, so did we have a motion on that? We did, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I move. I make second. Further discussion. <laughs> Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Opposed. Motion carried. Public forum. Opportunity for those not on the agenda to briefly speak about an item. Anyone? Euler. Alrighty, onward, consent agenda. 
approval of Green Mountain Engineering contract, annual water and sewer inspection, an indirect discharge permit, ID 9-0208-1, approval of Green Mountain Engineering contract, annual fire department inspection, discharge permit, 7468-9015-T, uh, approval of Green Mountain Engineering contract annual landfill closure evaluation, approval of cer certificate of compliance, the town roads and bridges, standards and network inventory, approval of VTRAN's annual financial plan, for 2022, approval of public notice per V per 24 BSA 106 regarding long-term lease to Acorn Renewable Energy Co-op LLC, the Bristol landfill with with four, the Bristol Community Energy Energy Project. Yep. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Okay. Okay, can I ask a question now? Certainly can. Um, the the landfill closure evaluation, Val, uh, now that we have the, the um, solar array going in there, is there any of the inspection that's got to be within that that footprint? Oh, that sure. Yeah. There is, so and now I don't remember, Did in the lease with them, did we reserve the right to access? access? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and then the... the, the um, Lease the long term lease with Acorn. Did Kevin ever get it? Did ever get Kevin look at that and get back to you? Or uh, I have not heard back from him. Okay. Are you comfortable proceeding with that that way, Michelle? Or do you want to pull that one out? Yeah, I mean, week? I didn't think it. It's just a notice, really. I mean, usually yeah. we do a memo of lease for long term leases, so I, basically it's the same thing to me. It's the same thing, but. So yeah, I guess I'm buying that. So it's just a notice of the lease. It's not the actual lease. No, okay. it's just a notice. It's providing the public an opportunity to object. And if they submit a petition, it would require a, a special town meeting. We already signed the lease with Acorn. Last the uh, intent. Right. Notice of intent. The lease itself has not been signed. Anything else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carried. Who seconded that? I did. Regular business. Consider prepayment discount and performance bond options for the new fire truck. In the TA report uh, and in a table that Eric provided, Eric Warren provided, um, the town has uh, some choices of uh, discounts we can take advantage of by prepaying um, various increments. And uh, also the town has, by going through this, uh, by prepaying, the town also has the option of purchasing a performance bond uh, to protect the town in the event that it pays up front, but for some reason, uh, the vehicle is never delivered, uh, so the town would get its money back. And there's a small, there's a, a percentage fee for that purchase of the bond. What's your pleasure? I have a Sorry, question. I have a question about the bond, and I see Brett's on. So, K, this is KME, right? Or Jimmy. Um, they, I mean, They've been in business. Do we really have to get a bond? Are we really worried that they're not going to give us what we're ordering? Oh, hi, Eric. Didn't see that you were on. <laughs> That's all right. No, I mean, you know, it's insurance. Sometimes right. it helps people sleep at night. What's the, the chances of you needing major medical surgery, but you still have insurance? What's the chance of HME going out of business? Pretty low. It's been around a long time. Right. Uh, I think it's about 78 years. Um, so, they are 
you pay for the performance bond based on what insurance thinks that they're going to, you know, the probability of insurance, um, the probability of their default. So it's like five fifty a per thousand. Right. Um, so it's roughly like three thousand um, dollars. So it basically that's what it is. It's do you want a little bit of insurance to make it feel a little bit warm and fuzzy, or do you feel okay giving them that much money without getting the truck? Because I know some. Some some individuals I've talked to uh, just in general would be worried about giving five hundred thousand dollars to a company without actually receiving the truck. Mm. Some have looked at it the other way, like the company's been in business forever, and the chances of us needing that bond is pretty low. <laughs> but but really, in the end, it's just like any other insurance. So as this once once this truck is purchased, I mean the the email said that that. Uh, they would start ordering the major components. Once those major components are ordered, are they ours? Uh, that's a good question. I would assume so because we paid up front for whatever. I, my assumption would be that we would get those pieces and then the insurance would cover the rest. Uh, the performance bond also covers if they have to, if they go out of business and we have to have another company finish the truck, the performance bond pays the difference. So it would pay for a little bit more, if that makes sense. So it pays to get your truck done. Eric, can you remind me of the time frame when the like when the orders placed? So what they want us to do is they you basically sign like the initial contract and they come up with the money. So the truck was originally six hundred nineteen thousand one hundred dollars. Uh, if you put down five hundred thousand, you get a twelve thousand dollar discount. And if you put the performance bond, so it's like. Let's just round to six ten. They they put a contract for six hundred ten thousand dollars. We sign it. That's basically our authorization that we are going to go through with this truck, and then um, they can order those major parts like frames and engines and transmissions and wheels and rims and get those things moving. Um, and that that's when it starts their three hundred sixty five day clock in the contract. They say that the truck will be to us in three hundred sixty five days. Okay. So whenever we start that clock, it's better for us we get the truck sooner. Um, uh, on the flip side, uh, there was some worry about change orders and talking to the salesman. Really, the only thing they do for the first month or two is really get those parts together. So we're working as a group to make sure that we um, look at every facet of the truck and make sure everything is exactly like we want, you know, this shelf here, that shelf there, this paint color, that paint color. So we have about two months to get over that and it won't cost us anything to make those changes. After that, then you start to get into change orders. But we don't plan on going past that, but that's kind of the time frame. You start this contract, it starts their clock. We still have a latitude to change things for a, a month or so. And then they start, you know, actually assembling the truck. That's when it would get more complicated to change anything. Okay, thanks. So Eric, do you know what happens if they don't get it to us in 365 days? Is there some kind of penalty for them? The contract was written that says a financial penalties will be assessed, uh, as deemed appropriate by the two entities. So there was no specific numbers, but yeah, there, there is a penalty for being late. There are also a lot of caveats that they're not responsible for various right. delays or supply interruptions or Act, acts of God. Yeah. There's That's a lot of uh, worried about. <laughs> pandemics, not, not our fault kind of things. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So the contract's not worth the paper it's printed on basically. Pretty much. <laughs> But the if, but if that were to happen, could then the performance bond step in, or is that not covered by the by the performance bond? A delay in delivery would not be covered by a performance bond. Mm -hmm. And we would have to uh, we might be challenged to prove the cause for the delay. Mm -hmm. Have suspicions, but we would have to probably be able to really prove that in fact it was their fault. Mm -hmm. right. And not, not subject to some of those exemptions. Yeah, and, and their trucks had been coming in in like 280 days. So they've extended out because of COVID. So, you know, they're much further than they normally are. So they're hoping as things loosen up, it'll start to go shorten up the time to delivery. But for now, they're still being cautious and doing 365 days. So I have a few questions. Um, it seems like this is, it's three different things that we're looking at and they're all lumped together, which I think is is adding a little bit of confusion. So you've got prepayment, 
and then you have the discount, which is tied to the prepayment, mm -hmm. um, and then you have the performance bond. So right. we're looking at the suggestion was five hundred thousand. So it's a discount of twelve thousand, which isn't that that great a discount. And if you factor in the performance bond, it's really about eight eight thousand or nine thousand. Right. Um, so it's again, it's even less of a percentage. So mm -hmm. my questions are: Do we have to prepay? If we don't, does that does it doesn't happen, or is that a choice that we have? Um, and does, my second question is: Does the performance bond, like you said, it's insurance? Thinking of that as a separate entity, would we go that direction anyway, regardless of the discount or prepay? So to answer the first question, uh, so if you put down five, if you don't want to put down any money and you just wait till the truck's delivered, six hundred nineteen thousand one hundred dollars. And I and I'll put the caveat out there that we are tweaking some things that may adjust it up or down. Like we may make a cabinet right. bigger or smaller, but you guys yeah. authorized me to do six hundred fifty. So so you're right. It's like eight thousand dollars. So you know the question is: Is it worth eight thousand dollars to put your money um, to pay up front before you get the truck? You know, in the back of your mind, it could also be the question: Are you making how much money are you making on the five hundred thousand sitting in your bank account for a year too? So right, exactly. those are all questions you have to kind of um, look at. Um, and no, the performance bond. If you didn't put any money down, you don't need the performance bond because then if they don't deliver the truck, you're still sitting on your money. Right. So so yeah, it is three different parts, and they have a sliding scale, and obviously it's a it's a mechanism for them to get money up front because they have to go out and buy that engine and they have to go out and buy that transmission. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have to, if we held the money and didn't pay till the end, then they have to front the money. So this is beneficial to them as well. So because right. it's beneficial mm -hmm. to them, they try to give you a little teaser to get you to pay up front. Jen, what are we for interest on our money? Um, well, it depends on how it's how it's being allocated at the moment because we use our capital funds as tax anticipation notes for ourselves when we're low on cash flow. Uh, so we we pay back interest. So sometimes the interest is actually like to, in this fund because we don't spend money out of it at all ever. Recently, um, we've used that money to supplement our cash flow. So there's been higher interest that's been deposited into there because we pay that interest back that's been missing and we use like a local I'm trying to think if peter and i talk about whether it's a local borrowing rate or a local cd rate is typically when we borrow for a tan but off the top of my head i couldn't tell you what our current interest is but this is in a money market account so it's not just in a regular so is it, I mean, ballpark, is it 2%? Is it 1%? Is it? I assume it's probably less than that, but. So if it's less than that, if it's less than 2%, it's, we're not going to make that $12,000. I think my suggestion would be. No, I mean, if you look at the, in the town report, you could see like last year, what we made on interest and under, under the capital funds it we have it broken down to show you what you make on interest. I don't have mine available in front of me. So I can't answer that. Yeah, because it's about 1.8%. That's what our, our our discount would be or our percentage. So if we can make make that or, or more, then I would sort of recommend keeping the money. I would agree. But... I would be confident in, in what you're saying, Peeker, that we will not make $12,000 in a year in interest on that account. So my my suggestion would be if we wanted to to prepay, would be to go with the three hundred thousand and not do the performance bond. Yeah, and that way whatever's purchased is ours, and that would leave us that would leave us another three three fifty to fin finish the truck in the event that something happened to them. I mean, because I would assume that we would own right up to three hundred thousand dollars worth of that truck. Uh, the cabin chassis, engine, transmission, and that is probably guessing what uh, commercial chassis are going for is probably going to be around one hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy-five thousand, maybe more. So just the just the cabin chassis will cover better than half of that. 
I mean, to get back to your point, Ian, like from a fire department point of view, that has no effect on the truck or delivery right. times or anything like that. It's purely a money management issue. Error. I just look at it as if if we did the 500 and we and we take the three out, we're close to if we did the 300 and didn't didn't buy the bond. Yeah, eight, almost mm -hmm. eight each way. Yeah. Joel, did you ask me a question? Yeah. Did they give you a kind of like snowplow trucks when you buy them? You know, you buy the international from one dealer, and then it's got to go to a body and snowplow dealer. And usually the body and snowplow dealer don't get it on time. Say, well, we got the truck late. Do they have a date? How many days out? You said going to be 300 and some odd days, but do they have a date from the time the chassis rolls into their HME's yard? No, they don't have a delivery date on that. But right they, now they're not they're not they seeing major them. major delays in them. Well, they, they couldn't use then. They couldn't use the excuse <laughs> when they got the truck late. I, I would like to see if we could pinpoint them down of time from the, you've got the total days, but from the date of delivery, the chassis, I know they did it on the Spartan, the 98, when that rolled in and that was four months late. Wasn't it Peaker when we got that truck? I think, I, I think you'll find this one's different. I think you'll find that HME builds their own cabs. Don't they, Eric? They do. Oh, this so is they're, so, they're just okay, going to, sorry. They're yeah. going to order the running gear. Right, it's just the running so stuff. Frame rails, engine, and transmission, and then and rear end, front end, and then they're going to put their cab on it. So okay, right, um, right. Because right, it's like mostly you know like the Dana rear ends or the Allison transmission or the uh, engine. So those are the big things, and then the frame rails. But the rest of it's all assembled by them. It's all one, uh, one and done through that company. They don't buy pieces like some of the other dealers okay i mean i guess my my gut instinct was to not buy the performance bond no matter what we put in there i just i feel the company's been in business long enough that there's that they've got a good um, reputation they're not gonna just not deliver so whatever you decide to put in i would just i wouldn't do the performance bond but i'm fine with the three hundred thousand if that gets us where we're kind of talking about I'm fine with that too. Mm -hmm. Well, I would entertain a motion. I will give that motion. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I will second that motion. <laughs> so what is the motion for? The, the motion is to pay down payment of 300,000, get the discount of the 7397 and no performance bond. Mm -hmm. so, second that. My final question would be the sales contract. Valerie, do you sign that? Is this you're muted, Val? I recommend that the select board authorize either Brett or Eric to sign the contract. Okay, so I'll make that motion and I'll authorize Brett or Eric to sign the contract. Okay, you're good with the second for that? Yep. Any further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor, raise your hand, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Hey, go buy a fire truck. <laughs> so is that. Try, um, I'm trying. Go order it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Get this started. Yes, Thank you. My computer, sorry, my computer keeps flashing on me, so I keep missing. Something. So is it Joel that moved that and Ian seconded? No, I moved, I moved it second. and Ian Michelle. seconded. Okay, sorry. Sorry. I mean, you can give Joel the credit. I don't care. <laughs> don't do it. Michelle needs to be held accountable. <laughs> I, I only make the motion. The rest you have to vote on it. That's I'll set it. Yeah, I think she's good. Okay, moving on. Consider acceptance of a gift from the Edith Stock Trust for the enhancement of bird habitat in Bristol. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Well, there's the question of how it should be um, set up as an account. Uh, we have several independent 
uh, accounts like the Pebble Peak um, Fund and some of the other ones, uh, our rec my recommendation would be to make it a establish a sub account under the conservation fund. That way, there's a clear linkage uh, for this fund, and it would be stewarded by the uh, conservation commission. Works for me. <laughs> Sounds good. If it, if it doesn't add too much complication in terms of our how we handle funds, if this is how we have done it in the past, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. But just uh, gives gives us a clear way to go with it and they they would just they would come to us with a recommendation on how they wanted to spend it and we would exactly. approve Correct. right that's what i was going to ask are they still going to final say would be us to approve their recommendations that's my understanding okay i'm fine further discussion who moved and seconded i moved i second Further discussion? Uh, sorry. Uh. <laughs> That's my discussion. Uh, Chair of the Conservation Commission, Carolyn Dash, is on the line. Oh, there she is. Uh, any questions? Is that okay in terms of a separate fund? And I'm, Yeah, I think that makes sense. The idea okay. was that they were thinking they would put it in our control. We said that we don't actually have a bank account, and so we were just trying to figure <laughs> out a way to make that happen logistically where we could have this money to help the birds of Bristol in keeping with the edict stack trust uh, wishes. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Okay. Excellent. All right. Further discussion? Good. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Yep. Opposed? Motion carried. Consider updates to Bristol's personnel policy. So, uh, select board members uh, were provided with a, uh, well, posted online, uh, our um, two documents, two versions of the existing um, personnel policy with uh, some staff comments and Michelle's comments and also a, a document with uh, comments from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And we recognize this is gonna take a while to go through. What's your and, pleasure? And just as a way to organize and proceed, uh, uh, we suggest starting from the top and just work through, realizing that some of the sections kind of loop around and, and uh, I'll refer to other sections and we can circle back where we need to. Um, do you want to, do you want to go through, do you want a, a set number of pages we want to tackle tonight? See, just go through each section and see how far we get. How do you want to organize that? I say, let's just start from the top and start going and see where we get and where we say, okay, that we've spent enough time on this tonight. Let's. Okay. <laughs> Why don't, and because we'll get to some of the comments too that people have made or so and suggestions. Why don't we set a time limit that we want to work on this tonight? And okay. That, uh, Make a motion till seven forty-five. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've, 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 we've got a minute. Eight. It's going to be a year-long effort. effort. No, I. Oh, I apologize. I I didn't come through on the spam, so I don't have it. That I printed it all out at work. Like I said, I didn't get back to my desk today to bring it home. But you can you can access it from the uh, the website. The, yeah, the, the links on the website. Go ahead, you guys get started on Can that. we put it up, Val, though? Sure. sure. With the one with the comment, not not yeah, the, the VCLT the comments, right, but our comments. Right. Yeah, let me uh well um hmm. Where Jen? <laughs> what are you? Yeah, if Jen could, because uh, I'm I'm going to have a, another window open, um, and, then, and then you'd see all of that as well. So, if if Jen could put up hers, that would be super. Or I could do it. Or yeah. Oh, there we go. Lovely. There she is. Go so down to the first section, Jen, where it starts with wording. <laughs> I'm not worried about the table contents. Right. <laughs> All right. So um, on, I'm looking at 
hang on a second. Let's, uh, let's get a time limit here before we get. Do we want to spend 30 minutes? Sure. I was going to, was going to say Eight. 45, but <laughs> 30 Which minutes is, is fine. See where we get okay. 30 minutes. Maybe we can give it another 15. Eight, until 8.15. 8.15. Yeah. All right. You got it. That way we don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask a question about full-time school year. Do we actually have people that are full-time school year? Well, both the VLCT and Jen recommend that that section be deleted. Yeah, well, you've got in the first paragraph, it says full-time school year. So you delete that, you want to delete that. Yeah. In that first, first, sentence. first sentence of the paragraph, person's covered. Sorry. So it's in the first. Oh, the first is covered. Section yeah. two, first sentence. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, full-time school year. Catch. Peeker, we um gonna rack your brain here a minute. Didn't we put that in, Michelle, when Peter Coffey was on, and we were trying to I don't have to use the word. Remember when we had the <coughs> not the hub, but the skate rink would close or something during the school year when summer vacation, and we were trying to cut some costs. Did we put that in there for that? Refresh my memory, maybe. Remember we had we had some a third person at the rec department on part time during. I think it it was intended for for a position at the hub, Joel. I recall the same thing, but because of the way that the rec department has revamped and whatnot, I don't think it pertains. I mean, I'm not opposed to taking it out. I just think that's why it was that was why it was in there. I'm just trying to refresh the in Darla's. Uh, so that's why it was put in there. I'm not opposed yeah, we never really hired anybody just for school year at the hub, but um, well, it would be a go back in my memory bank tool, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, would, would the full time school year could go into the part time employees position. I mean, if we had to, they, they had to say, Well, we're going to lay somebody off, that could be in the part time employee. That could be, I'm, I'm vaguely remembering, but yeah, I don't, um, like Jen said, I don't know given the structure that they have now that that's applicable to anybody. I have on that section. I'm scrolling too fast. Just tell me. You want to do section three right now? Can oh, this is Brett. Are we allowed to ask questions? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, if I may, I, I sent uh, at the town staff meeting a few weeks ago. I. I uh, was telling Valerie that I had some updates um, that I'd like the select board to consider to your personnel policy manual, obviously applicable to the fire department. And because I heard you guys were going to be doing this, uh, this exercise. Um, and I don't, don't even know if Valerie's seen the email yet, um, but uh, I, I sent it to her. And obviously um, as you guys are in section two, there's some something there I would like to make a recommendation on if, if I could. Um, so in paragraph two, the last sentence, paid call personnel, or excuse me, paid on call personnel, it says. Mm -hmm. You guys following me? Yeah. So, well, to start with uh, the paid on call personnel piece, I would like the select board to consider dropping the on out of paid on call. As we work through this uh, compensation piece, you know, paid call, whether you're paid hourly, you know, per call, whatever. The on-call uh, insinuates that, you know, you're getting call, uh, paid an hourly rate. So that's just a recommendation, a suggestion, how we're going to take that. Um, so I have that last sentence in that second paragraph written as paid per call personnel perform work on a non-continuous or irregular nature where the work schedule cannot be predicted in advance. So that defines your paid call firefighters, what they do, how they work. The way they're the way they're being paid. Are you are you 
thinking of um, because you use the word call there. So if you're thinking of doing anything with training, any kind of compensation for training, you don't want it limited to just call. I, my thoughts, Brett. I, yeah. I guess under those, those, you know, that first paragraph, it says a paid on call. And then the second paragraph and the third one, I'll say should it I missed the I uh, Joel I Paul I missed the on call in that first paragraph. Should it say a paid per call firefighter is a volunteer resident of the town of Bristol? Not a paid call, but a paid per call. Just uh, Wait, for it, the only the only thing I'm not sure you want the word call in there. On call, on call would tell me that I'm being paid to carry my page. Which can isn't, we, which can isn't. We just say a firefighter. Do we have to say paid on call? I I would think if, if there's any consideration of um, compensation for the for the training that they have to do, if you're considering that at all, I think we need to we need to get the call part of it out of there. Mm -hmm. But if that's not in your immediate plans, we can always change it again. It was just a suggestion, and and honestly, I, I didn't wasn't thinking through the whole training piece. I was only thinking about legally paying firefighters on an hourly rate versus uh, you know a set set amount on a per call basis, regardless of length of time. So I, that's why I was trying to drop the on. But I, I I obviously understand your point. You're trying to make peaker, so I guess I would leave that to you folks to decide what is best. If you want to just drop paid on call, paid per call, paid call fire personnel altogether and just call it what it is, firefighters mm -hmm. or fire department personnel. Right. So if, you just, so if you drop the, if you drop the paid on call and left it as personnel defined in section three and then section three, you said, what was the, what was the wording you used, Brett? Firefighters. Yeah, uh, uh, fire department personnel. Fire department personnel. Brett, I'm looking at the uh, the document that you sent on Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, where, you, and I'm actually seeing it for the first time, so I apologize, um, that you recommend deleting that entire section because Correct. they could be defined in other sections. Some of these uh, terms and uh, descriptions can be defined elsewhere. Well, they, they are already defined in other sections that, mm -hmm. you know, this is when, you know, this all came about, we were, the town was fully bringing us on board into their personnel policies. And this special section was inserted because it was just seemed like the best thing to do at the time. But, you know, several years have gone by and uh, there's no section for the highway department. There's no section for the police department. So my recommendation is to do away with section three in its entirety. Um, and once you get there, we can talk about it. I, I, uh, where those things are already spoken about uh, in other sections of the manual. So that's, that was my thinking, Valerie. Hmm. That might be a good idea. So then we have to change, then, then uh, striking paid on call well, why don't we, st I, what's the thought of this here? We strike the paid on call in section three, it just say firefighters in section three. Then it will say, first paragraph, a firefighter is a volunteer resident of the town of Bristol who is interested in helping the neighbors. And then we strike the, as a paid on call, the Bristol Fire Department depends upon their timely and determined response, serve their community, and they will be compensated per Section three, paragraph two, where it says about the, the minimum stipend of a minimum wage. And we, uh, we take out also that paid on call. For a firefighter, the second paragraph would start, a firefighter, we paid a stipend on minimum state of Vermont, current minimum wages. What's the thought there? For I, I, I think that he, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, I don't want to speak for you, but I think he's looking at a way to get away from that. Yeah, that's yeah so a, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, that's what I was gonna say. I thought Brett was saying, let's just delete this whole section because then they would be covered as basically employee, not an employee, but a personnel 
under the rest of the policy, and we'll have to define firefighter at some point in the definition somewhere. somewhere. Well, could we just just change that three to to a firefighter, and then leave that first paragraph taken out? All the both the the um, paid on calls and the homeowner or other, and then delete everything else. Then at least they're defined. Yeah, and the be the benefit piece, right? You do want yeah the last paragraph. The last paragraph, I think, but I I understand what you're saying, Beaker. Yeah, so we get we keep the first paragraph and the last paragraph and get rid of the two in between. Can I make a suggestion? Since sure. since Brett Brett had sent this on Sunday to, and. I was CC'd just because I'm a liaison and, and Val was, and we both weren't able to respond to Brett just because of a busy day today. Because Brett sort of, it's, it's the firefighter is sort of throughout the, the whole personnel policy. Do we want to table the, the discussion with Brett for this evening and continue as we were and maybe come back to it in the, at the next meeting and just involve Brett and go through his changes I don't know people's thoughts about that or Brett, your thought. It, the reason I was saying it would give us an opportunity to look at the suggestions that Brett made, make some suggestions or thoughts of ourselves, you know, ourselves, and then come back to this and, and just be focusing on that section. Cause I can see it's already like, it's almost eight, you know, so it's going to take yeah. us like a long time to get through this. And I feel like if we can tackle it in chunks that are specific to certain areas, it might be easier for us to do that. That works for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I haven't, Peter and I and Michelle haven't seen, Right, exactly. And I haven't seen it either. I just wasn't able to look at it today. I apologize, Brett. Is Brett, what do you think about that? Would you like to have, is that better for you to have an opportunity where we're just focusing on that at perhaps the next meeting? Oh, of course. This is your meeting. And I, you know, I apologize. I just finally got around to doing it. And, right. Uh, no, I, I, want, we I want the opportunity out there for you to, for you to talk about it too, and give your reasonings. And I can feel it, you know, it'll be a good discussion and it'd be nice if we're able just to focus on that, I think, because it's, it's easy to go through those sections, I believe. Yeah. So if I, if, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say, so for uh, transparency with the whole select board. So yes, I, I sent this, my uh, recommendations, suggestions to, to Valerie uh, and to Ian as my liaison to the board, asking them if I could have time with them prior to discussing this in open session for, for this very reason. Um, you know, there's just, I provided clarity, I, I think, in, in my comments. However, having the opportunity to, to sit down, you know, not on camera and, you know, quite frankly, sure. we might waste, waste a lot of time when, if, a if a member of the board, our liaison and town administrator have a good understanding, they may be able to help explain things better when we when we do go through it in an open session. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it gives us the time, gives us another couple of weeks uh, time for us to the three of us to get together, go through and then start to tackle it uh, in open session. And it, and it also gives you an idea of what our thoughts were. So maybe you can tweak it to. Well, do you want me to put in, if I just delete it, it's going to show like it shows right here, the red strike through. So do you want me to put in the changes you had just suggested so that when Ian and Valerie go to meet, they remember and recall what the discussion ended at? Or do you want me to just leave it alone? I would suggest just leaving it for now. And I think Brett, Brett and I, myself and Val will have a discussion and, and we'll go through and then we'll bring it, bring it to the board at the next meeting. Yeah, I agree. Move okay. on. Okay. Is that, that works for you, Brett? Okay, great. Yes, no, thank you all very much. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna we'll skip section three, and then we we'll jump into section four. Yeah, I don't have a problem with section four. Okay. 
And I see that Jen incorporated uh, Jill's comments from BLCT in her suggested edits. Mm -hmm. For example, adding victim status. Yeah. Prime victim status. Uh, Jen, the, the file that you have, is, is this a file that Val has, uh, can see online? Or is our, Val, are you making your own notes? I just don't want to, it seems like we should be working from a single document when we're doing all this and not having two people write changes. Right. No, I have the same document. Okay, super. So how do we know what's scheduled to be added and what's scheduled to be deleted? The stuff... Well the, you, normally inserts are blue, but this one it's red with an underline, and then okay. the deletions are it red with a cross out. Peter, Michelle, I don't know if I can't remember. It's, what it looked like it's a setting in uh, in track changes. Gotcha. Well, as long hey, as so I, we're good. Yeah, we're good with section four. So section five. Right. So who so made? First, okay. The first red paragraph is an addition. Okay. And if we receive uh, Bruce's feedback on this, or is I I spoke with him when okay. When he Super. If you have questions about that? I would defer to him. And if yeah, I, my my only question question on this edition is, do we really want another officer of the Bristol Police Department to be on an interview? I mean, especially if they're going to be their coworker. Yeah. I mean, right now we have Val, um, Lee, Ian, you, right? Are you the police liaison? I am the police liaison, but I haven't been involved in the interview process. Okay. And usually there's a community member, which at this point is Justin. Um, and then Bruce. Yeah. The, some of the suggestions we're making is adding more people to this committee. Mm -hmm. And one of the rec um, the ideas of a police officer is so they can see the process. Not necessarily they would be asking questions, um, you know, uh, and then we could get from their perspective or, you know, different people's perspective on the way the candidate answers the question. You have a concern with that, Michelle? I just, I, the only reason I have a concern about that is because then they're going to be a coworker later on. I mean, I, yeah, I just put myself in the position of being the interviewee saying, well, why are they, inter why are they involved in my interview? Hmm. You know, if I go into an office, you're not going to have one of your coworkers in with you. That's, that's my only concern. Right. So I guess my question, I have a question about the process. So is it, I'm assuming there's like an initial interview you know, and then you, you know, you, it, you come back for, for a callback. And is that, does that smaller pool, then there's a recommendation made from that smaller pool. So I guess I'm wondering at what point would that additional police district or police um, officer be involved in that? Perhaps it's just that initial interview hmm. or I'm not sure how that works. How, can you walk me through that, Bruce, how that so the, the setup with this, this would be the final interview before the person reaches the select board. Okay. okay. After this interview, um, if all people on the committee or the majority felt that the person should move forward, then we would make a recommendation to the board. Um, and if you don't want an additional police officer on there, uh, then that's fine. I was trying to, we're a small department, and as we progress, um, at some point, uh, somebody else is going to be in the position that I'm now in. And I was trying to include people so they know the process. So there would be a natural change of the guard, so to speak. But yeah, this, you know, it's, it's, those are su suggestions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel that. I'm okay with that because I feel that that a police department job is slightly different than than an office job and the way that especially the, the department interacts with the community, things like that. Um, and I, I do like Bruce's perspective in terms of the learning experience of an officer doing that um, instead of never never being included in something like that. I think it'd be a useful thing to, to learn and be a part of. I, I'd like to see Bruce possibly the, what do you call it? The 
barracks commander out in New Haven for the state police, you know, that oversees his officers out there. Maybe that person to be on the, you know, be on the um, list of, to, to, to interview a police officer. Sure. I, you know what? I think that um, as we're moving forward, we might even ask, um, right now we have a police district resident and a community member. We might even ask for another from the community or surrounding area. So I, I'm not opposed to that idea. Yeah. And I'd like it to, to read any police department applicant, not excluding the chief. I mean, if you announce your retirement in a few years and somebody applies for the chief, um, I want to make sure that the police chief is also interviewed by the board. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You could say, I'm going to retire you know, a certain date, and, uh, and then we're going to start taking applicants so they can get hired before you leave. And um, uh, I still want you on there interviewing, but I think that then it should come in front of the board for an interview, the final interview for be in front of the board for a police chief job. Isn't the hiring of a police chief is different than? It says any police department applicant, Michelle. So any police right. officer. You can tweak the wording to whichever works or whichever right. wording works for you. Yeah, but if you go down and you read the, the second, not the next paragraph, the following paragraph, yeah. it says that any applicant selected is vetted by the department head and or interviewed by the committee will be presented and introduced to the select board for final determination. Right. Just said yeah, presented that... and introduced. It doesn't say interviewed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think that's implied. There's questions. I, I mean, if you're going to make the final determination, mm -hmm. if there's questions and you don't like the answers, you're, you're not going to sit there and vote to, to hire them. I wouldn't answer. Right. I would Back. Right, it does say oh. for final hiring determination. Well, Peter, we're going to let uh, a group to hire uh, the police chief. And if we had, we had three applicants for the police chief, we had five and we narrowed it down to two or three. And we're going to let the committee hire our police chief for the town that answers to the board, our administrator through the board. And we're not going to, we're just going to get a meet and greet. That's no a final hiring determination yeah and you've got a you've got a group of six people that's a big group that's a, that's a good size committee yeah when if we're going to do it this way then we do it for the next road foreman we do it for the next rec director they don't come in front of the board i'm not sure that i took that this job on for not interviewing people that work for us they do come before the board they don't interview Peeker. They come as a meet and agree and shake hands and give them no. the Peeker. I know they come in for us. I'm not denying that. But I'm saying we don't interview them. Well, that's what that, that's, well, in my understanding, that's what that presentation and introduced to the select board for final hiring determination. That's the determination. You'd have an opportunity to ask questions, therefore be, it being an interview. Am I, am I correct, other folks? That's that's the way I interpret it, but maybe I'm Joel. How do you interpret that? You interpret that as just a well. I know there's been three police officers in come in front of us and a couple of road for, road park people, and it was just how you doing and and uh, presented to them, and then you know in Bruce's case, he read the uh, his uh, statement to them to to hold up their their badge and their integrity, and I agree with all of that. And but we never asked him any questions about anything. I don't think we were prevented from asking questions, Joel, though. No, I know. So we're always saying, do you have any questions? And we may not have any, but. Do you want to change that to say final questioning, questioning and hiring determination? Would that feel better? I, or final? I don't mind having a problem with the police and this committee hiring the officers. I think when it comes to a chief that we're going to have run this department, maybe uh upwards of okay. 20 okay. So, so what if we add the department heads will be interviewed by final interviews of department heads um will be interviewed final uh 
by the select board. It just just for clarification, the committee is not hiring anybody. Right. The committee would be doing a, a you know an interview, and one of the members of the committee is uh, uh, the liaison from the select board. So there would be some perspective from the select board's point of view. And we would just be making a recommendation or the committee would be making a recommendation based upon a background check, uh, based upon um, uh, an interview and we would recommend it. But then at that point, yeah, you have the ability to ask questions. And if you don't agree, you certainly can say, no, we're not going to hand hire this candidate. I have a couple of questions if I can jump in and it's, sure. it's relevant to this discussion. Well, first, a small question is in that first edition, first added paragraph, it says um, that uh, the committee would include the police chief, a town administration. Is, is, was that intended to be a town administrator or representative of the administration? So we could clarify that. I would say town administrator. Right. Okay. That's, that's um, the other thing, uh, we're currently in the hiring process right now for the public works department. And right now, so far, it's just been me and Eric uh, selecting the candidates to be interviewed and we schedule a time that's mutually convenient. And we that's, that's how we've approached it. I like the idea of including a member of the select board, specifically the liaison. Speaker. <laughs> But another question has come up that um, in terms of meeting with the select board and at what point that does that happen and open session or closed session, because um, the candidate might not have informed their current employer that they are um, exploring other options. And so if they meet with the select board in open session, then that could be problematic if the select board ultimately chooses not to offer the position. Very problematic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, to reply to that though, this brings up a bigger question and this is, it involves our committees and commissions because the same process happens with that. The select board is supposed to interview uh, uh, a volunteer for the committee or commission. And oftentimes, depending on the committee commission, they handle it differently. Um, the Conservation Commission generally invites someone to their meeting and they are sort of do the interview and then they recommend to the select board and they come before us. Planning Commission comes directly before us. There's no interview at the Planning Commission level. Energy Committee, when I was the chair, I we interviewed people because I wanted to bring, I thought that was an important part of the process. So I think that information should be in here within hiring. I think our boards and, and commissions sh should, uh, go by the same whatever we want to work through. And, and I speaking to Joel's question, it is true when when you go through a number of interviews and then you come before the select board, yes, we can ask questions. And oftentimes we do, but they're, they're fairly minimal. It isn't like an interview. Um, and I feel as a select board member, I feel that I want to trust the interview process that's brought this person before me. I, I feel that it's really not I'm probably not going to make a decision to not hire this person based on them coming before us after maybe three or four interviews with various people involved at the town level. I'm just, I'm trusting that the town administrator, the liaison and other members of the public have vetted this person and, and are making a sound recommendation. And I, and I would want the same from any committee or commission as well. Um, you know, you put the responsibility on them because they know the area that they're focused on and they know the kind of people that might be might, might work well uh, with the group and with the department or whatever. So, so I do feel, Jill, that you're, you're right. You, it, it is less about an actual interview where you might say, nope, I'm not going to hire this person. Um, so I don't know how we can tweak that where it becomes that, or maybe it can't become that because of what Val just said in terms of the, the, the open session versus executive session for these kind of things. I mean, Brett makes a comment um, about, can you just make reference to department head appointment policies, um, which, it's probably a good idea if we have that in here. <laughs> right. Department heads are, are should be interviewed by us. It should be interviewed right. by the select board. Yeah, and, and I don't I, know. I, Jen, I, do we have that in here? I I don't. So I was trying to hopefully clarify this process because I do feel like, you know, what Valerie said is it's different for everything. So 
you know, this is what we found with this policy is that it be, it becomes gray in specific yeah. areas. So being able to have new anybody come in and be able to reference a document that's more black and white than it is gray was, was the goal of this. And um, so uh, the police department already does kind of have their own committee. So I had talked to Bruce about it, but no one else really has a committee to do that. Um, I thought the police department's committee was disbanded. That's no longer there. You interviewing. That's different. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> also, <laughs> oh, we've, reached, we've reached our time, by the way, everyone. Yeah. The fire department. We made it to page two. <laughs> oh, if, this, is a, if this is a robust discussion. Um, yeah. want to continue. Well, we what were you going to say, Peter? Sir, do you want to continue another 15 minutes until 8.30? Yeah, we can do that. I was just saying that the fire department has a committee of, that interviews perspective. Right. So it's not, it, it, it's not just the police department. Right. And the only thing I'd say, Ian, about the committees that you were talking about is those are kind of volunteer committees, whereas this is talking about a hiring, you know. Right. Uh, so. Employees. It's, it's right. just. They're not signing a personnel policy when they sign on to be okay. the committee. So it makes it a little. Okay, so, so maybe that needs to be somewhere else because oftentimes there, there's confusion about that with, with chairs of committees and commissions on, on how that process is done. And if we have nothing in writing, then that makes it more complicated. Sure. I don't know. This seems pretty complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so so let's address let's address Val's thing. So we have the issue of the of the open session and, and executive session for a potential hire. How do we? How would we In work? Both ways. Okay. So I guess that would I would uh, agree with what Valerie's saying in the sense of if you guys are interviewing, it would make yeah. more sense for it to be um, an executive session. Whereas if you are just blessing shall we say um right then you know they potentially have already given their two weeks notice but i i think that that's the part of this that should be clarified the most because i would think as a department head if you're going to go make the recommendation that this is the employee that you go to hire and that that's what you're telling this person so that they're prepared when they come to meet you um you know in my mind if you're saying you're recommending jen to to be the new plow lady uh, that I you're going to be the plow lady. That's great. Congrats. Right. Me. All the all sorts of all sorts of skills. Um, <laughs> that you know, raise our insurance card. Insurance. Yeah. <laughs> like, do I give my two weeks notice, and should I give right my right notice? Like, I think I think that's an important mm -hmm. something to define to define here. Like, how are are you going to have department heads and Valerie and the liaison interview and that it is a recommendation that comes to the board that is a blessing or are you guys going to interview everybody in executive session? Uh, and we ask when you can start work and it's typically, I, I've got to give my notice. Mm -hmm. um, I, the problem I, I see with this is that you have the interview committee ask all those questions and have vetted them. I mean, what's a select board going to ask that right. wouldn't already be repetitive? Yeah. I mean, unless there's something personal you know about that person. That, that, that's the part that I have a hard time with. And like, so, so we, we're working on uh, public works department personnel now. If Peeker is attending those meetings, I'm, I'm relying on Peeker's uh, knowledge and experience to, to vet candidates. And, you know, when, when the person is chosen and comes before us, I'm going on Peeker's recommendation. I don't think I could have any specific questions for that person that would sway me unless I deliberately wanted to insert myself into those, in, into those meetings and ask to be included as a select board member, but not as the liaison because I was interested in the process, let's say. But I think when it comes to us, at least at, at the blessing or however we, whatever we want to call that, 
I think it is just a meet and greet. And it's also a public introduction as well to, uh, for the voters to sort of see, see a new hire for the first time. But I thinking back when uh, uh, the town administ administrator position, that was all executive session. Uh, obviously that's, that's a very high level position um, and things happened and things changed and it took a while. Uh, and then it was sort of publicly announced. And I think, and I can't remember if Val, cause I wasn't, I select board member, but I probably was at the meeting. Val then was, you know, it was like a meet and greet kind of thing um, when we got to the end of that. So I don't know oh, if we want to create, do we want to create a certain name for that? Sorry, Sharon. That's okay. I just wanted to throw this out. When I went for an interview, I was told that there would probably be two of us that would meet with the select board and the select board would decide which one of us they wanted. It ended up that I was the only candidate and I never ended up going before the select board. They just confirmed me on whoever suggested that I be hired. So I don't know if you would do that with any other positions, but when I went, they said probably the top two would go to the select board and then they would decide which one they wanted. Huh. You were also in a different time frame, Sharon, because we didn't have an administrator at the well, time. Well, true, but so it was different in that sense. So it was uh, that's I mean, that's why I would like to create clarity so that, you know, like does an administrator and a department head telling uh, a candidate that they're going to recommend them? Is that trigger for you should give your two weeks notice or? I would, I would think so. Well, see if it was me, I would not give my two weeks notice until I had confirmation from the select board that I was hired. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, <laughs> I agree Sharon. That as well, but then also it goes on Valerie's lines or Michelle's lines or whoever's lines of going to, into a public meeting and your employer yeah. seeing you go to a public meeting as a final candidate. And then like, it creates a bad position, unfortunately, for this candidate. Yeah. Well, I think you should do it in an executive session if you're gonna do it that way. I do too. I would not, if I had been working, of course I was different because I had already retired from my other job and been off all summer. But I think if I had to go before the select board and get a confirmation before I, I would not give my notice until I had that confirmation. And if it Agreed. wasn't open session, then I might have had a problem with it. And you should yeah. in an executive session. I, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with Sharon. Because the I mean, select board can go and you can, you might see something you don't like. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Or you know something, like Ian said. I mean, I would recommend, I would prefer to have them in executive session because I mean, it's one thing if you're doing department heads and then you may want to make, if, if we have final candidates, you may want to have community ask questions like the town administrator or whatever, but a general employee is, is that really imperative? I guess you guys missed the whole thing. I just wanted to add any department heads. Like I said, if we were going to interview a new police chief in eight to 10 years, when Bruce decides to retire, and he's sitting in on that interview with um, with all the people that in, on this file here. And, you know, we I would want department heads or an administrator. Um, you know, we had a committee of uh, residents narrow the list down for administrator when uh, Therese left. Well, we got we got sidetracked from what you were talking about. Yeah. Sorry, I would want to just see that say. Sure. A department heads or administrators will be a, a minimum of three or two final applicants will come before the board. That's all I wanted from in, that. Yeah, in a, in a closed session. I think, yeah, department heads. So, Joel, let, let, me, let me put this out to you. If we're currently looking for public works personnel, would you be comfortable if uh, Eric, Val, and Peeker uh, – decided to choose somebody and they and when they came before us in, in an open session essentially we're just giving the blessing is that okay with you or would you prefer Abs to ask questions no absolutely now when they wait wait absolutely that's okay absolutely would, let them hire let them make a record oh, okay okay great it's that's meet fine. and greet but if you know if i knew something about that they bring somebody in joe blow comes in and, and i'll say we need to, i need to tell you guys something in executive session 
Okay. And, you know, and then say, yeah, this guy held up or this girl held up the bank or did this or, you know, did something that I know that we didn't, they didn't catch. Right. They didn't mm -hmm. catch. That's okay. so I think so, I think so adding, that, adding department heads, I think would work. Well, I think we may want to change and make a section or a subsection saying department heads. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I think it, get, it gets too muddled when you start trying to add too much stuff in one, okay. mm -hmm. one section. Well, I mean, I guess, and on Joel's, you know, if you, if you guys are thinking that that's the opportunity for the other four people who hadn't participated in the interviews to disclose something that they might know, then, you know, perhaps like Sharon said, you might, it might be worth doing the entire thing in executive session to avoid anything. And that if you wanted to introduce them at the at a future meeting, you I mean, could. If you remember, we did an officer went from part time to full time, and they had their family there and, and the camera, uh, and this and that. That wasn't a great time for the board to say, you know what? No, <laughs> no, I'm not impressed. We're not going to hire. No, that was uh, that was a done deal before we walked in the room, because and it did it work out or not? I don't know, but it. Um, we weren't going to say no that night. That's for sure. So, so would we do two yeah, things we, then? It would, it, the select board, it would, you, the first one would be an executive session and in, it could be a meet and greet or it could just be we ask questions or if we had, did have an issue that we had to bring up, you would bring it up at that time. And then we would do a public one uh, talking about the new employee because I think we want to have it as a public record having it on on. Uh, tape and and so people could see that we have a new hire in whatever department at, at whatever level. Right. Uh, I'd like to have the option of we could, you know, if they bring us a candidate and somebody knows something that we can interview in an in executive session. Okay, so if you do an interview, meet and greet, an executive session, there's no issues. They're going to be offered the job at that point. They can give their two week notice and then come back to do a meet and greet or. Yes. Yeah. I'm fine with that. An official. Yeah. I know. I know it's a double thing. I mean, they've already gone through the interview process perhaps a few times uh, with the same group of people, and now it's twice for the select board. But the, the but for them, I guess it would probably be a much more relaxed relaxed experience just to be introduced at a, at publicly at the select board meeting as the new whatever versus having to answer questions and, and the potential for something happening. Um, seems like a much more relaxed situation. Uh, and more fun for that person or more enjoyable so at that meeting would the board officially say we offer you the position or that you, you were hired as whatever well that would be up to val i there think be, there might need to be some negotiation of, of terms and certainty right. okay i'm just trying to think of what happens at that last meeting like you know if we've already asked our questions what you know what happens at that last meeting is it is that the official offer or is it something else? The official yeah. the, the official offer would be made in that executive session interview, I would assume. And then that way they could give their notice. And then the the follow-up meeting would be this is our new employee, welcome board. Yeah. That's okay. the way. Because I'm just thinking if there was if if we're truly interviewing as a board wouldn't we want time for discussion, perhaps not in front of the candidate? You'd have, you'd have some information in advance, I imagine, because I imagine Valerie or somebody would provide you with kind of a rundown. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really know. I'm just assuming I haven't yeah. been a part of it, but I assume that the way it's happened in the past of uh, this, the, the select board would receive the resume and whatever materials the candidates provided. Uh, I think met, uh, I've met with the select board in executive session and made recommendations and uh, related also to uh, terms, uh, compensation and uh, whatever other tweaks to be offered, like sick or vacation time adjustments or something like that. Um, and I'm trying to remember how it happened with the, the rec department went through quite a lot of transition quickly. Um, the, the director was hired. Uh, the, the teen center director was hired. The assistant uh, at the time was hired. And I don't recall 
that I think Meredith may have met with the select board. I think that was that was definitely an executive session as a department head, but I'm not sure that the other two did. Uh, no, and I they, came as, they came as recommendations from the department. Right. right. So I don't know that you actually met them before they started their jobs. Yeah. And I mean, that that's the only thing I could say is if we're going to make an appointment or they're going to be on the uh, agenda, you know, either whether it's executive or public, you know, we should at least have some kind of information just in case somebody has something that the committee didn't think about. Hmm. Yeah, and that, that would be that executive session. We, we would be informed of, of what's happening in terms of the hiring process. And I think we've been informed in the past. And then we, the select board as a whole would have opportunities to ask questions uh, and discuss a candidate uh, at that executive session level. Decision would be made. And then two weeks later, it, they would be just a meet and greet or an introduction to that new person, even though they, they may have already started the job you know, earlier than that, it's just an opportunity to introduce somewhat a new hire. Mm -hmm. and, and we haven't done that in the past. And it's, yes, it's another step, but I just, it's a nice thing to do. And I do think there should be, there needs to be more openness too. I don't want to ne negate not having the public involved, even though I guess it's our, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the, what the procedure is for that, how much needs to be publicly done. Well, if it's actually still part of the interview process, it wouldn't have to be public at that time. Right, right. Yeah, the the I mean, agenda is very general. Right. Okay. If that's the actual, that, if that's what we're trying to get to here is that the board has the opportunity to actually interview and not just for a final hiring determination, which I have to say, I still think that covers it, but whatever. Um, <laughs> we've got around for 25 minutes, but I, and I think that still covers it, but. Um, and we're still at page two. <laughs> And we're right. still at page two. And we're, we're at 832 now. So I don't right. know if we want to extend another 15 minutes or. Well, we can come back to hiring next time. So Jen, can you do, two, I sent you a message, but can you change administration to administrator? Yeah. And, and Bruce, tell me if this is okay. Where you have as determined by the chief, can we put, put in there optional and or as determined by the chief. I don't want you to get stuck to saying you have to have an officer there if there's not one either available or not one that you think should be involved. I'm good with that. Say that, Michelle, one more time, please. Under, just before as, de as determined, right in the beginning, put optional. Oops. What is going on here? Gremlins. Yeah. Apparently. And, and slash or. What is going on? <laughs> you gotta let one of your kids do it. You got, a key, you got a key stuck or something or other. What is going on? And or. Okay. That, that's what you. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do another, another 15 minute speaker until 845. If you think we're ready to move forward with this, if we're going to stay here beating up the same thing, then no. <laughs> um, I we personally didn't... think this section is okay. We may want to add a section about uh, department heads, but I think we're okay with this for now. I okay. do too. Okay. All right, so section I go to six. Michelle, I'll agree to that if we if we're going to do department heads, but I, I won't agree if, if we're going to leave that any police department, I'll put we interview by the committee. Yeah, no, I think we need to do a separate department head okay. because a department head isn't going to be interviewed by that specific committee. So I think we need a separate section. Well, it might, at the beginning, we get 15 people for police chief or town administrator. We, the committee may narrow it down to the top three and then submit to the select board for final interviews. Well, it's the, ultimately, Joel, the first paragraph, you know, kind of as Darla was saying with the final determination, you know, the select board gets to decide how it works no matter what. And but you, you can only, anything uh, no matter Jen, what. the committee only brings us one person then. Do you want to that's, tell that's, that's something that you've decided. For yeah. options, for like options. We, we could ask for more than one right. final but, but the policy is written right now you've decided it, it would appear to me that 
you've agreed that Valerie and Eric, like as this example that we've been using, Here Valerie again. and Peeker, per Here se. Again for road form, for road positions? And, no, but, but Joel, I, we're talking two different things here. I, this hiring section to me is just about employees, okay. not employees, like not department head employees. I think that's why I said, I think we need a separate section that says department head slash police chief and have a section there on what the requirements are. Okay. Because you said you were fine if the committee interviews like a DPW employee for them to come with a recommendation. I'm, in, I'm okay with okay. rec department or the fire department or the police department right. or town administrator right. hires you know, an assistant down at the clerk's office. I'm fine with all of that with the committee okay. and you bring a meet and greet to the select board. Yeah. And if okay. one of us says, whoa, we know something you geek people need to know about this one. Then we go in executive session and say, I don't recommend this. Be I'll tell you what the evidence is I have, or you have on somebody. And then we decide now this committee, you didn't know this. We understand you recommended them, but for department heads and the town administrator, I want a minimum of two or three interviewed and brought to the board for final interviews. So Jen, if you could just make a marker, like a somewhere in there, just say department head. Why don't uh, we do hiring that? policy or something? Yeah. <laughs> and I will draft something to bring back to you and you can yeah. see that hiring next week. Yeah, Eric, that's good. And go to section six if you want to do the next 10 minutes or bail and start at section six. Let's see. Uh, so there's a line through the any town employee. It just got moved down. It looks like okay. Peter. You just moved okay. down. You know that I think so the floor was better. So I don't know if you want to try to hash out probationary period in your next. No. Yeah. I think let's, let's do that. That one's fine. Jen, Jen, is there anything in there? The last one about the CDL, carrying a CDL must pass a pre-drug test, pre-employment drug test, refusal, blah, blah, blah. What What about that? Um, don't we have something that now we've got guys that have been with us a long, long time and they all got CDLs. What if they refuse to take a test now and they're notified? What's the, is that already in there somewhere? If they're refused and, they, and they're and if they're called to take a test and they refuse the uh, DMB will pull their license, their CDL. CDL. But do we have a requirement, though, Peter? I'm asking that. If they, they're CDL, they, can, they can say, well, I can drive the sidewalk plow or I can drive the loader. I don't have a CDL, so you don't. We have a requirement for our CDL drivers at the highway department. If they get their license pulled, can we let them go for, do we have that? that you, we can allow up to 90 days for an employee to regain the status with the DMB. Okay, I see that. Last so I would assume that if they. Okay, said, all right. You guys would so that, that's for present employees too, not just new hires. Correct. Okay. Okay, I'm fine with that then. Okay. Are you good with probationary period? So I did change that. Did I? Can you guys see that? No. Yeah, you changed it from 12 to 6. Well, I did a range with the idea that then you might have to change the probationary period per employee based on, you know, like right now, per se, if you're going to hire um, a highway worker, you're going to want a 12 month probationary period because I think originally we had said that we wanted them to be in for a plow season. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily, you know, if you hire somebody in the office, they don't necessarily need a 12 month probationary period. Yep. You could use that range at, with some flexibility. I, I think that's fine. I'd like to say it across the board, 12 months. All employees, 12 months, leave it. It's been that way where you haven't had a big, huge, you know, thrown anybody out the door because they, Screwed up in the first 12 months, so. Comment? Go ahead, Go ahead Brad. Brad. Yeah, so, uh, and I know you guys got a couple of different drafts here, and I apologize for that. So I inserted in my um, second sentence under in the probationary period, it reads, the probationary period for a paid call firefighter shall be 
for no less than 12 months and not exceed 24 months to complete required certifications because of depending on when uh, a firefighter a recruit joins uh, and when the training program starts, I mean, more times than not, it exceeds uh, 12 months because they are still on probation while they are in school because without successful completion of your firefighter one certification, you don't come off probation. You don't, unfortunately, you don't become a Bristol firefighter. I think that's a separate paragraph, though. I don't think that gets in that. It's all it's probation. It's probationary period. Right. I understand it's probationary period, but I, I would think that it would say a firefighter probationary period. I, I agree. 12, that. 12 to 24 months, because just for the reason you're saying, Brad. But, well, it does. It says the probationary period for a firefighter. Now, Brad, I think what he's saying is within the probationary period, just put it as a separate paragraph. Or maybe where it says all new employees except for elected officials and uh, Bristol firefighters. It could say it right there. And then we'll cover that in a different section. Well, it will be covered in the same section, just a different paragraph. paragraph. Yeah. yeah. So, Peeker, that's what you're saying, just a second paragraph yeah. in the same section? Correct. Copy that. So, Joel, you, I have to ask, you know, on a regular um, employee, what, what do you think 12 months is going to get you that you're not going to find out in six? Well, we only do evaluations once a month, uh, once a year. Mm -hmm. Unless they're a new employee, then they're subject to a six month evaluation because typically you do a, you, you have offered a pay increase after a positive six month review. I, I just think, uh, 12 months is not that, 12 months in that much to ask. Keep your nose clean and stay here. You're going to keep your nose clean all the time. But um, I don't know. I just, I just would like to keep it 12 months. Well, you could do it per employee. It just gives you the opportunity to lessen it if you wanted to. What's the reason for changing it to six? You made that suggestion, Jen? Yes, just because of exactly what Michelle has said. I mean, typically what happens, what has happened in the past, at least what has happened with me was when I got hired, it was after a positive six month review, I got a pay raise. Well, why should I be on probation for 12 months if you're going to give me a pay, potentially give me a pay raise at six? I guess, is that a, is that a normal procedure that, uh, at the end of the probationary period, you're getting a pay raise? Are do or employees and I don't know that do employees and in the, typically employees have just fallen within the um, the you know the higher like when you do annual evaluations. So because it's been the 12 month. Valerie, what's your opinion on this? Well, thanks for asking. I was just thinking. Unless it's already there and I'm just not seeing it, uh, perhaps uh, adding something where it's six months, but it can be extended uh, if the conditions warrant, if the, if the performance warrants it. So you could say six month prob probationary period um, with the option of an additional six months if conditions warrant or something like yeah. that or that it can be extended to a, a, a certain length of time or an agreed a determined length of time. So, and I know Jen, I, I get it exactly what you want to do. We want to make sure a guy can guy or girl can plow. Right. I mean, I don't want to give up, you know, the six month, if you hire somebody in April, if you only if you hire somebody in October and they did a great job all winter and yeah, did everything. Can they go? Like, that's why I was thinking that you could you could determine it per hiree with the with the range option. Um, so you could set you know if you if you did hire somebody to work for the highway and you hired them in October, you could say we're going to do a six month probationary period because you know it's going to cover the winter months. So you feel you felt like you could make a good decision after six months. Um, but if you hired them in April, you want 12 months because you, you want to catch that winter to make sure it, it works out. 
By all means, everything is just a suggestion. Um, <laughs> so it's totally your call. I think that's fine having the having it be six with the option to extend. That that covers both things that, that we want to do, I feel. So Jen, after probationary period, if you put a comma there and then add in um, with the op option to extend for another six months. Me out here. I'm am I not in the right spot? You are in the right spot. So you don't want it to have the range. Well, it looks like you don't have a range. It looks like yeah. it, you've got 12 crossed out. No, no, uh, range. I I guess. Oh, yeah. I don't it looks like 612 months. <laughs> well, no, the 12 is crossed <laughs> out. I can see that. That's, That's too much. Yeah, the intention was for it to be a range, six to twelve months. Apparently, oh. I cannot see. Oh. No. Well, if that's the case, then that's fine. I'm sorry. I was like, I'm so confused here. You had six and then crossed out 12. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was under the impression it said six to 12. It was a ring. Oh. <laughs> that makes good sense right there. Now that <laughs> makes sense. Right, well, all right. We're at 845 now, 846. <laughs> Can I and ask Jen, a quick question? Jen, uh, uh, Brett put in his wording in the chat mm -hmm. to you. Okay. I will use that in it, there. Tasha and had and a we'll, question. We'll, yeah, Val and I will will meet with Brett and then we can pass on his <laughs> his thoughts too. And we'll have official. Okay. No, no we got that for right now. Just, at least Tasha, that's you had a question. Yeah. Um, so, how do you um, notify the person they're under when they're hired that they're under that probation period? Because I'll have to say, when I was hired, I never had an interview. I never had. I never was nothing. <laughs> So just, okay, like, you're going to have to interview again. It's going to be a lengthy process. <laughs> and you have a 612 month probationary period. <laughs> <laughs> but my guess is, Kasha, when they get hired, they'll say it's a six month with the option to extend to 12 months. You well, know, I just wondered if there's something you can. 12 month probationary period. And I also... I'm just wondering if they're given something in paper and writing saying that and signed because, you know, you they could very well say I was never notified of that. Now, yeah, Val usually does a letter, I believe, to all new employees saying, this is your, this is your hiring, this is your pay, these are your benefits. Right. I think but, you have to find, you have to sign the personnel policy as well. Right. Well, part-time people are different than full-time people. Uh, so I guess that's a whole, that's a discussion for another night because you guys have extended yeah. the place. So I'm just going <laughs> to... Yes, we're done for tonight. We made it to the end of page two. <laughs> Yeehaw. We're going away. How many pages in this document? Yeah. What did you say? How many, How many pages? pages document? I'm not going to tell you. That's no fun. <laughs> it's only <laughs> 25. 612. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully there's are big sections that we all agree on and we don't have to like nitpick. <laughs> all right. We're moving on. Appointment, reappointment of town officers may include deliberation and executive session. Have, have we heard from everybody whether they want to be reappointed now or? Not everybody. Uh, let me, uh, let's see here. Hang on here. Um, pulling up the most current version of the, the table. Um, share screen. <clears throat> so here's the most current version of the table. I just heard from Randy Sargent that he is interested in being reappointed uh, to the equipment committee. So um, Conservation Commission, we have uh, Carolyn uh, did express interest in being reappointed. We still have some vacancies. Uh, Carol Wells did express interest in being reappointed to the Design Review Commission. I've only heard back from Sally Burrell on the Energy Committee. Uh, have not heard back yet from Katie Raycroft Meyer or Bill Brown about Planning Commission. Bill Sayre is interested. For the Are Energy all Committee. These people up? These yes. people who just turned up. Or are those staggered three-year terms? 
they're all three, those are three year terms and their terms are up this year. Okay. So every, every, everyone on this list is up this year. Correct. And I think I've caught everybody. And we, and we just heard from Randy Sargent that he's a yes. Yeah. Put an X in the next one too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Joel, are you still interested in being fence viewer? Yeah. Okay. And solid waste district? Yeah. You and I have talked over that one about that. Okay. What places we have. Okay. And I don't know if, if uh, what the status of the energy coordinator is, if there is one. There isn't one. Essentially, it's always been the energy committee. I think we can remove that. Okay. Uh, because there just isn't. Energy, the equipment committee, uh, Peter, I thought Peter was on that committee. Uh, uh, I just appointed him two on. weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, he was on as, he was on as road foreman. And when he wasn't on the, he wasn't on as a, a member of the community. He was on as road foreman and Eric took his spot when he left. Well, He's that been, was what, two years or three years ago? We just appointed He's been coming to meetings. Yep. So that was, that was for 2020. Do we know, we'll have to ask him if he wishes to serve for 2021, correct? I mean, I think you ought to have either five or six, seven on it, because you, right now you've got six. You've got to tie every time. Or... Yeah, I was going by the town report, but I think we had this discussion a, a month or so ago. And... Right, and, and we appointed Pete, Pete Bouvier okay. through the end of that year for until March came on, so. And Alan Clark did call you? Yes, yeah. Because yeah. he's immortal. Half the was on uh, last... Alan was on the last meeting as well. Oh, was he? Okay. Right. Alan, Ken, myself. So we'll add Pete Bouvier to this list. And I'm going to create, as I said, I think two meeting or last meeting, a, a document that can be shared on the town internal server that has all this in here. So we don't have to keep jumping around each time. Or so we don't have it where only Val has this document. No, I was going from the town report. Well, the town report is wrong. That's why I want to create that document. <laughs> okay. So. So we'll wait. So Val, you're handling all of this, right? You reach out to everyone and get the response. So sure. we'll, we, we call upon you for an update in two weeks to see how that list is progressing. And I ask as a person who has to update the website. Well, I would recommend uh, if the board is inclined to reappoint these candidates tonight and go with that, yes. circle yes. back in two weeks and follow up on those that we ha haven't heard from uh, or other people might have expressed interest. Uh, I make a motion to appoint these candidates who have responded in the, the positive to serving again on our committees and commissions. Okay. Further just hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carried. Who seconded? I did. Oh, thank you. All set. Approval of March 1st. 2021 meeting minutes and and also the february 22nd and i did already receive edit suggestions from darla michelle and ian for the on the 22nd on the 22nd right right 22nd okay that's because i haven't i haven't yeah. finished march 1st so i'll make a motion to accept the february 22 minutes with the changes that were given to val in a second second Further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carried. And we'll do the March 1st one's next, next meeting? Yep. You said February, which one? Sorry, my computer cut out again. February 22nd. Thank you. 
Uh, authorized accounts payable, warrants, and liquor licenses. So, reminder to and sign license for Bristol Discount Beverage, I think is. Yes, right. and Joel didn't sign one of the sheets on the liquor license we had a couple weeks ago. So, Joel, when you Joel. sign that one. All right. I got to be in town tomorrow. I'll sign it. Okay, thank you. All set? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Tasha, do you have the amount of the warrants? Yes, I got the email. Okay. I haven't looked at it, but I got the email. Can we get that number for the public? Uh, yes, I can get it if you'd like. Yeah, I was going to say, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. It's uh, 70235 and 6 cents. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Roundtable. Ian. Uh, I have a couple things. The first is that I'm working with Mary at NEAT to uh, uh, working on the archive. She has limited space that she can put on her uh, internal uh, broadcast system. And so she and I are working together to be able to figure out a solution to host uh, archival stuff of old meetings. Usually it's about a year maybe of meetings, maybe six months. Uh, I've noticed going back even into some of the, our past meetings, uh, it's no longer available because she's had to move stuff off. So I'm working with that on her. So we have a secure uh, and reliable way of looking back at old meetings. We're considering uh, YouTube uh, for nonprofits. You can upload anything of a, of a certain time, any amount. Um, service is really good. If people are familiar with it. We're also looking at archive.org. Um, you can upload stuff sim in a similar fashion to that. So I'm working on that with her just so we have a good record of all the, the videos of all of our meetings, both select board and uh, committees and commissions. Hey, Ian, can I ask a question about that? Sure. Um, is there any thought or chance about, at least for select board minute, uh, meetings, to have it, us having an external hard drive we could keep in the office that had the select board meetings? She used to give them to us on DVD or... Oh, really? That's interesting. Um, um, you, you could. I don't know. If, if we put everything on, on YouTube, for example, it'll, it'll be totally accessible. Um, and, and depending on your network connection there, which is probably pretty good, you shouldn't see any difference other than having a, a live copy. If, if I work with her on that, I can definitely get it where it can be put on like a USB drive. And so you could have a local copy. Um, that would be a fairly easy thing I, to do, I think. I was just curious, just thinking sure. the same thing about, you know, access and whatnot, and if it made sense if she wasn't going to have an archival place. Um, yeah, no, she, she, we are either, you know, where she is, she's just trying to, we're, we're figuring out which one to use. And so essentially it would be similar to us where on our website, you can go to the select board meeting and see the agenda materials. And I have to put the, the neat link in there on her site. It would be the same thing. You could go to town of Bristol select board and instantly get to it. It's a little bit difficult at the moment with the way that her, their system is set up. It's hard to find stuff easily. We're going to try to fix that. Um, if we do this and you find that you'd still like a local copy, just because it's easier to know where it is on your folder on your computer, we can certainly set that up. She has everything archived as the files. They'd be large files, but we could put them on a hard drive uh, and give them to you. That's not a problem. Great. Um, so working on that, and then in a related way to the meetings, I'd like to see uh, a better setup with our meetings uh, using the Zoom, since we're going to continue to use that for a while. So I've been working with Chris to get the file for like the, the new development review board meetings. That's something we can't cover just because they're covering so much stuff because of Zoom. Um, and I think it's recording to maybe Chris's computer and then he has to upload it to the website and then I download it and then I give it to Mary. It's a really complicated process. So what I'd like to see is uh, perhaps Sharon can do this because I think she's familiar with setting this up. All of our committee meetings and commission meetings, including the select board meeting, I think should be all set up. So it's a recurring thing. We can use the same information for every meeting. The Conserv Conservation Commission already does this. The same link is sent out for every meeting the meeting is set at starting at six and ending at whatever. 
Um, you can have the meeting so it's automatically recorded. Uh, and I think we should record it to the cloud instead of recording it to a local hard drive. Um, I'd like to get access to the Zoom account to be able to get in and get those files, to be able to give them to Neat, um, if that's okay with everyone. Uh, it's just make, gonna make things a little easier. I'm sort of chasing down files now and it's sort of like, a, it's a messy process to do that. There is a limitation of how much space we have with Zoom, I think it's a gigabyte or no, I think it's 10 gigabytes. So it'll fill up, but as long as we can get those files off quickly and delete them, I think it shouldn't be a problem. So I'd like to see that happen where if Val sends out this, the link to the meeting, she doesn't have to get a new link every time. She can just use the same one for every meeting, the same with any other committee or commission. I think that's gonna make things a lot easier. And, I, and it works with the Conservation Commission. It's the same link for every meeting that they have every, every month. So Ian, I thought by Zoom, by default, it should copy to the cloud. Um, so I think, there it's, must a, have been I think a it's a change. choice. Yeah, choice. there must have been a change. But by de if we've set the defaults, that that should be where it would go, and you should have access to that using our, you know, automatically. Everybody has the same login, right? We're using no. the same login, you should have yeah. access to that. Yeah, the I, same login that you use as a host is where you set I up. Don't, I don't have that because I've never hosted a meeting as the town. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Um, and I think, Ian, the other thing I, if I remember right, those, I was trying to remember if it's 30 days, those recordings stay, but it may not be. It may be. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a space limit and a time limit. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think most of them. Up quick. I know that was the thing I was concerned about. The, the only one I feel that we need is we have, we have the only, the, the last holdout, not the holdout, but the last one we, that Neat wasn't recording was conservation. They're doing that now. They have the time they're scheduled for the Thursday. Um, the DRB conflicts with um, school board meetings, I think, and on the Tuesday. So that's what, the only meeting I think that Neat couldn't do. I just want to make sure that, that Chris doesn't have to worry about recording each time. I want to have their meeting set up and, and recurring as well as having the option where it automatically starts recording. So he doesn't have to think about it and I can just go and get the file and give it to Neat and then they have a record of it. That's, that's the main thing. Um, so I think it's only that one that needs to record to the cloud. I know that often with, for the select board, we do a backup just in case. Um, but I think between those two meetings, I hope we have enough space we can find out. I've been saving them to the, to the hard drive. Right. And that's the thing. I, it's just, it's, you know, Chris has to upload it and it's like, you know, two gigs or whatever it is for the last meeting because it was three hours long. And that takes a lot of time to upload if it's him at his house or him at the office or whatever, and then to send me the link and then I'm downloading. It doesn't make any sense. I might as well just have the link that's on the Zoom cloud that I can just give to Mary and then she can download that. So if, yeah, if someone so maybe, may, yeah, maybe Sharon can just send me the town login and I'll just pop in on the website and take a look at the cloud recordings. That'd be great. And if something happens to his laptop, then you're out of the meeting. <laughs> if, it, if it catches fire again, that's right. right. Uh, so yeah, if someone could send me that, it'd be great. And then, uh, and then if, if Sharon, if you can work on just the meetings, similar to what you did, however magic you did it for the conservation, maybe if we can do it the same for both energy, planning commission, uh, DRB, and select board, where they all are recurring on the days that they're supposed to happen, because everyone's pretty locked in, and it's the same link. I think that would be useful. Yeah, I didn't set up conservation. They must have done it themselves. Oh, okay. Uh, just yeah. thought about when you do this, because if you log in and somebody else is already logged in, you might <laughs> pop them out. Get kicked out, there, yeah. There's a meeting going or if we're doing some stuff during the day. Um, okay. Yeah, so just be... Yeah, I can, I can do it in the evening, an evening that I think that there isn't a meeting. I can, we can double check on that. Maybe yeah, Friday there, is there night. A calendar? No. Sure that keeps track of the meetings and who's on and who's logged in? It's within the Zoom, there's a calendar that shows all the meetings that have been set up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna see if we can if we can pull that and have it connect to the calendar that's on the town website. At the moment, that's a manual process of entering stuff, but maybe we can connect those two and make it automated so it's super simple. That's all for me, thank you, that was long. <laughs> Darla. No, I don't have anything this evening. You just saved Ian. I know. I gave you my time, Ian. No, I'm good. Joel. Just Ian, so DRB meetings are recorded or some yes, of them? Yes, they are. They are, because I think those should be because if they have to, you know, go record or something, they should be. Yeah, Chris Chris has been making sure they're recorded and passing the files on to me and I pass them in turn on to Neat. Video and, and voice or just voice? Uh, video. It'll be a Zoom, similar to all our other meetings. Okay. And then, Eric, question for you. 
Eric Coda, is um, the new truck been back and has it been fixed with the with the dump body and the side dump? Are those yeah. things sure? Yep. They are? And the yep. plow switched yet or no? The new plow switched yet? No. No, not yet. I'm going to get the winner with it. You look sick, Eric. You all right? You look like you're... No. Okay. No. He's, he's attending a select board meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's got one tomorrow night to go to, too. Oh, All that's right. true. Oh, I have one, one last question. Ian, I mean, one of the things that we notice at the office, when you record them, you'll get two files. And I don't know if you can prevent this. One's an audio file, and then one's the video with the audio. I don't yeah. know if you can set that yeah, in the you setup can, you to can... just do that. Yeah, you can specify how it records, if you want audio, if you want all three video all separate. So we should, if I pop in, I can take a look and we can specify for each meeting if we want a particular thing. But yeah, we should be able to do that. Okay. All set, Joel? Yeah. Uh, the only thing I got is, uh, I'm actually paying attention to reading the sign. The taxes <laughs> who says April, uh, April 5th, shouldn't it be the 15th? That's next year. Exactly. I already called to share it. But good, you paid attention, Peaker. <laughs> well, okay. Try my taxes because I would have waited till the fifteenth. <laughs> Don't do you that. You would have been year. late. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um. Have you let Have you let John know that we're getting close? Yep, I he's know. on board. He's on board. Okay. So other business correspondence reports. You forgot that administrator's report. Administrator's report. You know what happened is I wrote names down the side and went beyond it. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I don't have anything to add to my written report. See, she told me that ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, correspondence. Anything? In case folks had a chance to review the list that was provided. All righty. Then I guess we're ready for a short executive session. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So I'll make a motion. We enter executive session to discuss. Do we do a contract to Val or just personnel and attorney client? Uh, just personnel. Okay. So and attorney client, no contract. Right. I make a motion that we enter executive session to discuss personnel and um, to discuss attorney-client communications with our attorney regarding prospective grievances pursuant to 1 BSA section 313, uh, subsection A, subsection 1, subsection D. Second. Second. Okay. Third. Oh. Any further? <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading here. All those in favor signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Opposed? Motion carried. Good night, everybody else. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>